Are you ready to see? With? I think. All right, let's go. I'm gonna just rip it off. Whoa. Peace, peace. This is Just Blaze, and I'm teaming up with the sneaker designer to the stars, Caddy Customs, and we're making one of one shoes for some of the most iconic names in our culture. Our guest today is the Rubber Band Man, an artist and label head with one of the most enduring careers in hip hop history. We're talking about the godfather of trap, a man who never stops his paper chase, a king who supports his community and loves his family. Can Caddy and I create kicks that will impress the king of the south? Will our interpretation of his style hit the mark? Let's find out. Welcome to Fresh Pit. T.I. is in the building, y'all. Yo, what up? How you doing? Good. What's going on? Good. Man, thank you. How you doing, bro? Thank you so much. I'm chilling, man. Sneaker track. Sneaker track. Uh, some custom comedy guys song, Sakaz. Whoa. You Those might have nice. crushed every guest thus far. Those are nice. You know what? Them the Appreciate flyers it. I've seen. Yeah. I've Thank never you, seen man. those before. I'm about to tuck my I'm, I'm a Sakai guy, man. Um, and you know, this is the, I think this is the second right. silhouette. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this particular silhouette is, I guess, the third even, because when they uh, did a collaboration with Comedy Garcon, they did a high top. Right. Mm. Yeah. I appreciate that. The man actually knows his shoes, knows yeah. the history yeah. of what he's wearing. Yeah, he what does. A, what you got on, Ken? So I got on the Air Jordan 1 Heritage. Okay. Nice. Yeah, kept it simple and dope. That's fire. It dope. It's a, a, a very dope combination with camo. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ready camo always pops. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does. Um, I just got on some S Concept SBs from 2015. Crazy. Concept Jest. Yeah, you crazy. just got on some Concept <laughs> SBs. <laughs> Them are crazy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you want to tell me a little bit about your process? I'm scared. Oh, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Like tip, like everybody Luckily, knows. I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You look good. You know what I'm saying? But um, I've been a fan my whole entire life since you came out to now. You know what I'm saying? Man, so thank I've watched you. your, all your interviews. Then hella research. I listened to all your music. That was by default. You know what Man, I'm saying? So you. I really wanted to, we really wanted to create something where we know that you will rock it. Okay. And that you would like feel that it's yours and only you can, you know, wear these shoes and nobody else. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So uh all right, you ready to see? With? I think. All right, let's go. I'm gonna just rip it off. Okay. Whoa. These are flavors. Them flavors? Yeah. Can you see, like, e where the images come from, where the colors come from? I see paper trail. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is dope. Can this you is see this dope. right here, Rubber Band Man? That's fire. Ooh. Man, it took y'all some thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's fire, yeah. man. We had to make sure this shoe was you. So, so you took a, just the original, mm -hmm. Original three? All white Jordan three. All white, All yep. white Jordan three and, and, and freaked it. And freaked it. That's yep. dope. Yep. Man, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, no problem. So, I appreciate um, it. Let's talk a little bit about the shoe. Yeah. You know, okay. Uh, the shoe itself. Um, Jordan 3, which is actually also my favorite sneaker of all time. It was, the, it was the first sneaker as a kid that I ever saw where I was like, I have to get those. Mm. You know, like I was. Perfect, you know, like 10, 11 years old, you start to come into yourself and right. you start liking your own fashion. You, you, pick, you want to pick out your own clothes and whatnot. Right. And that was the first shoe that I ever saw that I fell in love with. Um, to my understanding, this is your favorite Jordan? Yeah, man. Threes and fours. I really like a lot of them. I ain't gonna right. lie. Um, but threes seem to be, um, I come back to them more often right. than the others. I find. Other like sixes, fives, fours, twelves, you know that I I I find an affinity uh, towards, but but the three is a it has a consistent balance right. that I, I I just draw myself back to. Right, okay. right. Yeah. It's a classic shoe, man. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those it's one of those ones that never gets old. Obviously, we based the uh, color scheme on Paper Trail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of your classic albums um, features. Uh, one of my biggest records, one of our biggest records. One of my and, biggest records as well. Yeah, Live Your Life. Yeah. Um, now, I've told the story on my end a million times about how that record came to be. I'd like to hear your recollection of, of how the record came together. Man, it was very simple for me. Uh, we were nearing the end of the project, and I believe I had just turned in Whatever You Like, right. if I ain't mistaken, and it was 
you know, down to that point of we need to kill the ant with a sledgehammer. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, everybody was real confident about what we had. Right. Like, you know, if we really want to put an exclamation point at the end of it, call just. Right. And uh, I remember G. Roberson, Jason Jeter, uh, Gene Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, all in a in a studio session with me. Like, yo, we gotta play this record, we gotta play this record, we gotta play this record. I was like, all right, play it. And it was live your life, right? And the thing is, I had just kind of gotten off of house arrest. Right. You know, so I was able to move around a little bit more uh, at my liberty. It was like, nah, but look, I think it was Gene said, nah, we need those house arrest rhymes. <laughs> we need you to go back and lock yourself in your house and not come out right. until right. you finish this song. And I was like, I right, bet. And you know, um, immediately I could kinda, I knew that it was going to be introspective. Right. You know what I mean? But my, my vibe or my challenge to my vibe was to figure out how to associate it with everyone else. Right. I knew I could talk about my story. I knew I could talk about what I had gone through, but how to make my story and, and my particular plight, which was unique, uh, how to make that common to everyone else and right. how to make, make that. So that everybody could relate to it. Exactly. Right. So that was, you know, that was my task. You know, part of what makes a great song a great song is when Anybody can listen to it, they can feel it's about them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they can feel it's speaking to them. Another one of our constituents and uh, one of my sensei is, is for real. Right. Okay. And he told me uh, when I was, I, I guess I was playing some songs for him, and he, he said, listen, don't tell me nothing. He played it and he sat there like this. And I said, what are you doing? He said, listen, I don't have to hear anything. I should be able to close my eyes and see everything that I need to see right. to, mm -hmm. to bring me to the conclusion right. that this is the one. Right. You know what I mean? That's dope. So I always knew that that what we do is is much more than just words on top of sounds. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's capturing moments. I think that's the beauty of music. Um, the reason this shoe will resonate with me and, and people who live through this period is because they live through this period. Right. You know, it brings them back to a certain point, a certain time in their life. And whether that was a positive experience, uh, a triumphant experience, or, or, you know, a negative experience, they still are going to feel something. Right. right. And that feeling is tangible. And when you can use art to hit feelings, I think that's what, you know, that's the sweet spot that we all hope to hit. Right. No Did doubt. we hit your feelings with these shoes? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want to know. Is that heartfelt? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, cool. You did. You did your job. <laughs> nah, it's real dope. Yeah. I'm wondering how you did this. Oh, yeah, that's a trade secret, you know what I'm okay. saying? But that's the actual album. I see it. You see it, like, you I could... can see it. That's crazy, I'm right? I'm wondering how you did Ooh. this. Okay. I'll show you the tutorial. You will? <laughs> All right, cool. As long as we can speak offline about it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you got, you know what I'm saying, you got the alligator badge on Shout the back. Shout out to Laura. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she, she made these for us. That's fire. You know. With the rubber band, no less. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which also goes along with the colorway. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, we wanted to highlight that That's orange. slick, man. Yeah. That's slick. Yeah. So you pulled from trap music. Mm -hmm. You pulled from uh, from Paper Trail. You also got Family Hustle the on there. Back, you got the King, King. album. Yep, yep. Okay. It's yeah. dope. Yeah. So, I can't thank you enough. No, nah, yeah. go to those back tabs. Um, you know, obviously we wanted to reference King. Um... And uh, which you also did now, you did a song on King as well. I think we did, I'm, talk, did two, I'm talking to you. You did two. I'm talking to you. I'm talking King? to you, and then we did the intro as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. The dun 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 dun. That was not yeah, on the King's back. Yeah, the King back. Now wait a minute, was that the album? Now the thing is, what people don't know, okay. You do phenomenal hit records. You like you're an illustrious producer. 
Thank you. Um, no one can, you know, ever doubt your catalog or your skill set. But what they don't know <laughs> is you also have a phenomenal talent for doing intros to songs right. and interludes. Right, uh -huh. right, right, right. You do sample quality interludes right. and intros, changing your voice and doing all kinds of... Right, accents. You, you know, hey, like, <laughs> you, you came with some Russell Crowe shit one time. Right. <laughs> when the phoenix arose from the ashes! You see what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. That boy would go on to become king! Hey, bro. I couldn't ask nobody else to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't have even known that I needed it until you gave it to me, <laughs> you know. That's right. I think the interludes on the T.I. versus T.I.P. too, the, uh, the, was it like the, uh, there was three interludes. I didn't do the beats, but I did all the voices yes. on them. Yeah. And Urban Legend, yeah. the first song from Urban Legend right. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah. a lot of history together. Yeah, man, and we it's got funny a lot. You know, we do what we do. We always move forward to the next thing. That's right. And then you sit back and, you know, at times like this, we can really reflect. Like, we did a lot of work. We did a lot of work. And there's more to come. Y'all yeah. heard that here first. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We got one more album yep. to work on, as far as I'm concerned. You know, one more T.I. album. Right. Okay. I will work with just on whatever he got going on, as oh, no, long we, as I'm we, alive. Yep. But for T.I. albums, we have one. Just one more? That's it. Okay. You had a string of successful albums, right? Um... With street hits, commercial hits, and everything in between. Great discography. But outside of your discography, what do you feel are the top five most important or influential um, Atlanta albums? Rap albums. Outcast, Southern Player Listed. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Goody Mob, Soul Food. Mm. Uh, Thugger. Um, slime season, uh, future dirty sprite, Twenty One Savage, mm. his mm. last album, Twenty One Savage, the one where he got a lot with J Cole. Yes, on okay. yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. I love that record. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So moving up to these tongue tags here. Okay. Would you say that there's anything that you learned from your years in street hustling? Uh, is there anything that you learned that you were able to apply to your career? First of all, the stakes were so high in the trap that a wrong move, a misstep, right. would cost right. you your freedom or your life. Uh -huh. right. You did. Right. So everybody really had to play it by the book. Right. They had to play it. This unwritten rule of the G code had to be maintained. Else you could lose your freedom or lose your life. Right. Now, once you make it through that, it gives you a certain, certain level of discipline. Now, what we do in success is we kind of ease up off of that discipline based on the level of distractions we may have around us. Right. You know what I mean? We we get punished for that. Hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, punishment come coming in the form of consequences, uh, but without consequence, there's no correction. Right. Yeah. So after we learn those lessons and move on, you know, it becomes easier and easier. Right. Yeah, so I think that the music kind of taught me to not let up off of the principles that I learned earlier in my life. Got you, full circle. Yeah, and now I can go on into the rest of my life with right. that understanding. So speaking of the process, um, you always talked about how, you know, the rubber band uh, represents the struggle. True. And I don't want to, like, look, just make it seem like it's just some shit I'm saying. Right, like, you know right. What I'm saying? Like, I still... I still, it don't come from the oh, same. Oh, you still got the rubber band. <laughs> but okay. I'm, I'm still, it ain't, it, it don't come from, and I, and I, I peel off, so I go, I have a ritual. Because now, I'm kind of, I guess, more fiscally responsible. Right. At this point in my life. Okay. So I take my money, and I put it, and I count my money out of my, you know, safe shoebox, right. nightstand, whatever it is. Right. 
uh, and I'll give myself a certain amount of money okay. mm -hmm. and wrap a rubber band around it and i leave the house with it. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And right. if I need to spend more than that, right. I got to go back to the house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the rubber band represents something different today right. than it, it did, did then, then. Wow. but it's still present. Right. Oh, wow. When Mike Karen was figuring out what Atlantic was trying to do with your, with the first project, mm -hmm. I was at a session with Dre. Mike Karen comes through. Me and him get to talking. He said, let me play some uh, records from this artist I'm working with. And he plays me four records. I can't remember what they all were, but two of them were 24s and, and uh, Rubber Band Man. Okay. So and he had been playing records for, you know, he'd been doing this test with a bunch of people he was telling me. Mm -hmm. So I picked Rubber Band Man. Right. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I said, what's the problem? It's a great record. He said, yo, everybody, I guess everybody that he had played them for. 24s. Everybody had picked mm. 24s. And I was but you know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Right. That shit already had close to a thousand spins right. mm. before he even got it in his hands. Right. So it was already some groundwork laid. Right. I walked into my my lawyers, my lawyer Jonathan Leonard, also one of my mentors. I locked, I walked into his office to sign my release papers from Arista. Yeah. On that day, Mike Karen happened to be there. He was like, "So you're done." with Arist, I say, as soon as I signed these papers, you yeah. know, and I signed them, it was like, so what do you think? Like, you know, what are you doing next? And I looked at Jonathan kind of like, who's bro? He's like, it's okay. <laughs> He's like, it's okay, you could talk. I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna keep working it in the streets until I find mm -hmm. a joint venture, uh, uh, you know, a profit sharing situation. Right. Yes. And he said he wanted to introduce me to Atlantic Records. I told him to take me to his boss. Right. Because well, at first I asked if he was the boss. Right. Mm. I said, are you the guy who determines whether or not to do this deal or that deal? He said, no, that would be Craig Craig Calvin. Calvin, right. I said, okay, well, let's sit down with Craig. Right. And that is, I was very arrogant at, at a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> you know, my audacious tendencies came from I guess being ignored from, for so long, mm. you know what I'm saying? I think as black people, we live in a world where they would walk right past us and ignore us if we allowed them to. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So we kind of have to stand up and we have to honk our own horn sometimes because if we didn't, that motherfucker would never be heard. Right. So, um, so please forgive me <laughs> if that bleeds into business <laughs> now and again. Uh, I really don't mean no harm in it. Or knowing your worth can rub people the wrong way. Mm -hmm. yeah. No matter how you play it. Facts. That's true. Facts. But uh, yeah, it's funny because every time, like years later, you know, to this day, every time I see Mike Karen, he's like, you, rubber band man. Yeah. yeah. He's like, nobody else saw it. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of dope and whatnot, was there a point or was it a, uh, a situation? Like, what made you say, okay, I can put this part of my life behind me now? and move, mm. on, move on to the next thing. Man, that's a long story. <laughs> the year is 98. Going into uh, 98, I would put on seven years of probation for my first dope charge. Um, that was my first charge as an adult, possession of crack cocaine with intent to distribute. They gave me seven years of probation. So I'm on seven years of probation, and I'm, you know, working my way through it, uh, trying to do right. Uh, and, and at the time, me being a full-fledged dope boy, trying to do right, right. I mean, only selling weed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I had to get a job, though, and I got a job at the airport working for, what is it, ITS. Okay. You know, the cleaning out the planes and shit, because my auntie and her husband, they were like real big wigs at the time at the airport. So I'm doing that, and lo and behold, my girlfriend at the time told me she was pregnant. It's my first child. Oh shit. Now I have a timer. Right. I got nine months to get all this shit together. Right. I'm living with my mom, going to work, got a little 76 Impala in the back that I'm working on, but no real car. I got back on my bike and started back trapping. Right. And simultaneously, I ran into DJ Toon, who was who I was introduced to by my cousin, 
uh, Tremel. DJ Toon introduced me to Jason Jeter. We all decided to collaborate, put our money together to do a demo, um, and we had four songs. Okay. I'm still maintaining a job, hustling on my bike at night, and you know, just stacking my paper for when my when my when my child comes. DJ Toon, Jason, my cousin Tremel catch wind of what I'm doing. They have an intervention of sorts where they call me into my cousin's house and they sit me down and like, hey, we're all putting our time, effort, energy, and resources into you, you know, investing in, in your dream. If you keep doing what you're doing, you already on probation. You going, if you get hit one time. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and I say, okay, I tell y'all what. If one of y'all take me somewhere right now where I can present my art to someone and actually get further than I am now, then I'll stop. Mm. And everybody in the room was like, oh, man, come on, man. That's not even realistic. How could you do that? And Jason says, I know a place. Mm. I say, see, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was an intern at Patchwork Studio. Wow. Which I never knew until that day. Right. Wow. And Jay told him, I got somebody hotter than anybody you done had in there. He said, bring him through. So we go in there. I introduce myself. Very arrogantly, of course. And... I mean, for real, I'm like, man, who are these guys? Like, basically, I walk in the room like, I ain't never seen that one of y'all before, man. Who is y'all? Who y'all pulled to be? And so, so, so they hit the drum machine and say, can you rap on there? Man, what a boo fat. Oh, okay. So I go in, I one take it, I walk, I walk out, and everybody, jaws is on the floor. Like, yo, where the fuck have you been? Wow. I'm like, I ride my bike up and down Bankhead every day. <laughs> Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> and um, that session introduced me to all three members of PA, which is uh, Reese, Mello, mm -hmm. and KP. Okay. Now, KP happened to have been the a r for Usher's My Way Project. Yep. Mm. KP happened to have been the gentleman who introduced the idea of having Usher work with JD. Wow. Yep. So the success of that album uh, yielded him an imprint on the face, which right. was Ghetto Vision. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, he had just signed the Young Bloods and whatnot so on and so forth. I had no idea any of this shit at the time. I'm like, man, who is this nigga, man? Man, what's up, bro? I thought the motherfucker was finna come outside with a gold briefcase and just, you know, change my life. <laughs> like, man. So then nothing happened. I'm back on my bike doing right. my thing. <laughs> and I get a page early in the morning on, off a beeper. Right. And it didn't have a code on it. And you know when you a hustler, you get a page with no code on it. <laughs> Everybody got a code, right. Right. whether it's 50, 90, 100, you know, everybody has a code. And it was just a straight number. So I rode my bike to the payphone because my mama didn't have a phone. And when somebody answered the phone, they said, LaFace Records, may I help you? And it's two weeks after the session, so I'm right. complete. I'm like, man, who in the fuck at LaFace wants some dope? <laughs> <laughs> He didn't even what's going on. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so then they, they, they say, yeah, I say somebody paged me. They were like, yeah, it must have been KP. Once I said my name, and they patched me through to KP. And he was like, yo, so you was the guy that was at the session. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, you met me, and I heard your demo, and I like your shit. I was like, okay, cool. He was like, yeah, so I was just seeing, right? So we going to L.A., for the Source Awards and want to know if you want to come. I'm like, we? Who are we? And he was like, well, it'll be Outkast, Goody Mob, really? the Young Bloods, wow. and me. I'm going to be going. I was like, shit, hell yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so, but I knew that in order for me to have enough money to continue my operation, but still have something to go spend, I needed more. So I go to my plug, I say, hey, look, I'm going to pay you for the 63, need you to give me four and a half, and I'm going to give you the rest back when I get back home. He said, no problem. 
Now, while I'm out in L.A., the shit that happened, I can't make up. We was on the tour bus. There was an episode of Rap City with Joe Clare and Big Les. They came on the bus mm -hmm. with Outkast and Goody Mob, and everybody was freestyling, going back and forth. And then it got, I think, after CeeLo, didn't nobody want to do shit no more. <laughs> and they were like, ain't nobody up. But I hopped right in there. Bow. And everybody like, damn, bro, good, for real. Yeah. Wow. And so going into there, now I developed a rapport with Big Boy. He was mm -hmm. like, shit, come up to the room, blow one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right. Go up to the room and, you know, we just kicked it. We kicked it and hit it off from there. When I left L.A., got back to Atlanta, I never sold no dope no more in my life. Wow. wow. I gave that shit away. Wow. wow. That's I amazing. And I told my plug, bro, I'm doing the music shit. It's going to take me a little longer to get you your money back, but I'm going to pay you. He say, look, I tell you what, as long as you're doing the music shit, you don't owe me shit. Wow. You get back in the game, I want my money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but as long That's as you... Yeah. That's a great story. That's a great story. Wow. That was, wow. That was a long story, but it was well worth it. I told you. But it was, but it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. It's a great story. This is like one of the crispiest, craziest shoes I've done. We've I love done. them. I'm scared to wear them. Like, we, we wanted to make this museum crisp. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what you created with the Trap Museum. Thank you. Know you know what I'm saying? So is this something that you would wear or put up in your Trap Museum? I definitely would. Ooh, nice. I would wear them once. And then I put them in the trap music. music. Okay, I okay. Definitely would. Speaking of Atlanta, um, you peep, you might want to uh, peep these insoles. Go to this one. I think this is the one that's. Uh, okay, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. Yeah. You see that? So what I. They say the devil's in the detail. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So one of the, one of the uh, running things we have throughout every shoot we create is standing on your foundation. Right. Um, and you know, Atlanta is. Pretty much the foundational I'm freedom. looking for my hood in here. Right here, right? I see it. Yeah. It's at the, oh, it's at the, so it's it's at the, the heel the, on this yeah. one. Right. It's at the right. toe on this one. Right. Gotcha. That's dope. So does this shoe match your style? Like, is this something you wear? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I wear it. Nice, nice. I can see it with a, you know what I'm saying, like a light blue denim white t-shirt vibe. You nice, know what I'm nice, nice. Let the shoe talk. Yeah. Keep the simple. Yeah. And that's what you gotta do. That's what I like to do too. Mm -hmm. Right on. Um, if you was to walk into a sneaker store and you saw these on the shelf, like how much would you pay for them? I'm gonna buy them without asking for the price. Oh, nice. That's a good answer. <laughs> 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 no, that's cool. That's cool. My brother, thank you so much for coming yes. through. Man, thank you. Such how could I not? Man, pleasure. appreciate you. Yeah, thank absolutely. you so much. Make for some the noise kid. to Ti one time, y'all. wrap this up, man. How do you feel about these? Do you feel like you really nailed it? Man, I'm blown you away, bro. I'm blown. Nah, hell nah. I'm blown away by it. You know, I think, now these are exponentially fresh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, as long as you're happy. Dope. As long as you're happy, we're happy, man. Man, listen, bro. I appreciate you guys even took the time to, you know, use your art and design in my favor. 